Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much, have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Trade Winds RV Center here to congratulate you on the purchase of your Mesa Ridge 2402 Bunkhouse Travel Trailer. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration, your awning and your slide. Slides in at the moment, once it is out, get a good eye for that, see how much room you're going to need for that to come in and out unimpeded. Preferably nothing hanging over top of it, even though you have slide toppers. Then you leave yourself a walking space on the side, uh, past your slide, so you can get past it while you're camping. Also, I want you to think about where your docking station and your water and your power is going to be at. Your docking station is going to be at the rear of your off-camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle. Same thing with the power, all the way at the back corner. Just park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive, first thing you can do is level your unit. I recommend measuring your unit here, finding the exact center, putting your little stick on level on there, on your off camp side. So that when you arrive, you gotta use your power tongue jack that has a docking light. And simply lower or extend to raise your unit until it's level. Now should you lose power, you do have a manual override here that your uh, stabilizing jack crank will fit on. You can raise and lower this if you don't have power. Once you have your unit level, the next thing you do is stabilize it. And all four corners of your unit, you have stabilizing jacks. Three quarter inch hand crank, sock it on there, and just run these down. Now I do recommend jack pads. Jack pads are gonna protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris and hot black top in the summer. Uh, it's gonna better distribute the weight and just a really good investment. Grab a four pack of those with your 10% off coupon and go ahead and run your stabilizing jacks down. Now remember these are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. You only wanna bring them down to their taunt. Once you have any type of pressure on your uh, crank here, you know you're down far enough and you don't wanna go down any further. Go around, put all four of them down. Again, just until you're stable. Do you have your stabilizing jacks down? Are units leveled and stable? We can go ahead and hook up our power and water. Take a shortcut back here to your back corner where you have your 30 amp service. The way these new cords work now is they twist in at, at a little bit of an angle. Once they're in, twist to the right and then put on your gray washer. At the end of that 30 amp service, should you need to plug in at home in your convenience pack, is a 30 to 110 adapter. Let's hook our water up. We have a fresh water connection, city water connection, and black tank. Up here it tells you what you got. Tank flush, that's going to be a black tank. Tank fill is going to be for potable water. Point it down for city water. Water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 psi, protecting the lines in the unit. Always use this when using your black tank flush or your city water. Hook up your hose, but don't turn it on yet. Let's head around to your campsite. Actually, the back of your unit here. We're gonna find your hot water heater. All we're doing at this point is making sure we've turned our drain plug. You may have left this out the last time you were camping. Go ahead and put that in there nice and snug, then you can turn on your hot water heater. Or you can turn on your water. Once your water's been on for a little while, go inside and open up your hot water tap. It won't be hot yet, but once water's coming out of there, 
you know your hot water tank is full and you can turn it on from inside. There is an on off element switch here. Keep that to off. The only time you ever want to turn that on is if you're hooked up to 110. Also, hot water heater doesn't seem to be working. Check these little reset bubbles here. If it's bubbled out, just press it back in to reset. And a pressure release valve. All right, let's say we're gonna go camp. We're not gonna use city water. We're gonna use potable water. Same spot, same way. We simply turn this to tank fill. But just remember, uh, when filling this up, one way to tell that it's full is to go inside and press your fresh tank button. Your fresh tank button will tell you when your potable tank is full. Just remember, when you're using potable water is when you're gonna to wanna to use your water pump. Don't use your water pump when hooked up to city water. It's already pressurized. All right, we've got our water hooked up, electricity, and we're all ready to camp. Let me walk you around the unit and show you a few things. Starting here in the back of your off campsite, your black and gray holding tanks. That is where you dump them. There is your dump, your water dump, 12 point drain. The other gray water holding tank handle. Pass through storage. Docking light. Cover for your propane tanks. There's a regulator on that that automatically switches over if you put it in the middle and open them both up. Or simply point it toward the tank you wish to be using. Check your battery posts. Make sure those haven't wiggled loose going down the road. On your campsite, it says prep for solar. You can get a solar charging kit that'll plug right in there and charge your batteries. Your pass-through storage with all your hitch work. Your front stabilizing jacks. This is a furnace heat release. If you're running your furnace here, clear that. It'll get rather hot. You can also hook a TV up out here by plugging in cable from 110 there. There's a manual crank for your slide. Coming up here to your outdoor kitchen. See if I can do this one-handed. Hook here and here. Pull this out. Once it's all the way out, lift this up. That'll keep it from coming in and you know that your gas is on. Come up underneath here. You can see where your gas is hooked up at. When it's open, just remember the only way to close this is to shut your gas off. And your fridge, it plugs in right there. Little lighting out here, little accent lighting. Remember, when you're leaving the campsite, to lock your outdoor fridge. Here's a bumper grill for a griddle that's underneath your bed. Your hot water heater. Here is also prepped for a Furion backup camera. Should you decide to purchase one from our store, it's a device that sets on your dash of your tow vehicle, giving you a backup camera for the unit. Spare tire with a cover. And your ladder. Go up and check your seams. Cock your roof as needed. This back corner back here, we're back to our power. That about covers everything on the outside. Let's take a look on the inside. All right, going up the side of the unit. First thing I'd like to point out is that the fire extinguisher is located at the edge of your doorway. Make sure that you and everyone is camping with you knows where the fire extinguisher is in case of emergency. Right up here on the wall, you're right as you come in is your control panel. Simply touch these, there's your new battery. Here's your fresh tank. That's the button you can hold down to tell when your potable water is full. Your black and two gray tanks. Your slide control. Your awning control. Your awning, you're only going to want, want to run that out until the flap falls down to 90 degrees. And you can see the bar underneath. You know you're out far enough. Here's your water pump. You turn on if you use the potable water. Interior and exterior lighting. Water heater if you're hooked up to gas. Turn on your water heater here if you're hooked up to electric. Big storage closet. Walls on the bottom. We'll come right around the corner here to your entertainment center. Turn on your sound system here. Set on DVD. Let's switch the mode here. Bluetooth to radio. I don't know how we'll pick up anything in here. But your dual zone, you can play your music indoors, outdoors, or both. HDMI input. 
other modes, auxiliary, TV, DVD, Bluetooth, and radio. Coming over your self-explanatory microwave. You do have a light and a fan. Your glass top makes an excellent backsplash. You have a panel light here. You notice when you turn the light, get your spark when your gas is on, your flame will be right up there. You have it off, they're washing the unit right now. You also have a panel light for your stove as well. Same thing on the stove here. Turn it to light here and light it over here. No need for a pilot light. For your stove, next to your drawer here is your access panel to your breaker box and fuse boxes. Looks like you have mostly 15s in there or 40. Highly recommend grabbing a handful of those to take with you camping. A 110 here. More lighting here for your bedroom. And your thermostat. We'll start by turning on your air. Air kicked on. Shut the air off and turn on your furnace. You notice your air shut off kind of quickly. Now your furnace kicked on. When we shut the furnace off, the furnace fan takes a few minutes to shut off. Coming over here to your Nordicol fridge. Real simple here, turn it on here. Here's your mode. Auto electric, just electric, just gas, or auto. Auto means when you're plugged in, it's running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, a gas light will come on. And Temperature change one through five over here. Of course, you know your table will come off that leg and sit on these lips right here. Remove your back cushions and put on top of there for another bed. 110 on the wall over here, as well as your 12 volt carbon monoxide detector. The reason I mentioned this 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you're not plugged in, have anything charging your battery, disconnect your battery to keep this from running your battery down if you're gone for the day. Coming into the bathroom, just want to mention in here, 110, light and fan. The fan turns on there as well as here. Oh, that's light, there's your fan. A little plumbing to maintain, keep an eye on your plumbing underneath here. Remember you are bouncing a house down the road, you just want to make sure things stay secure. You have your hand crank open vent here. An extension for your table prep area come back into the bedroom not much to talk about back here except turn the light in here you see this bluetooth thing back here Jayco or Furion actually sells a bluetooth speaker that you can connect there one tens and shoot for laundry for the furnace just shut off it's also prep for a TV back here Oh, you can put a backer here, one tendon cable here. Again, hand crank open vent. And your emergency exit window. Underneath your mattress, you have your pass-through storage. And there's your griddle for outdoors. That about covers everything on the inside. Makes that act like we're leaving the campsite. And close the unit up. If you want to mention, this is where you're... Uh, smoke alarms at change the battery as you would normally so we're getting ready to close the unit up make sure this door is closed or that that extra counter space is closed and nothing's going to hinder your slide from coming in i like to come up here and shut off my interior lights now i can go through and see all the individual lights i need to shut off let me do that real quick now that all my light is off except for what i can control here as I said, make sure nothing's in the way to impede the slide and make sure your bedroom door is secured back. Once that is, you're gonna come up here and you slide in. So bring your slide in really quickly. You see the importance of having your countertop lowered. Do you hear that noise? There's nothing wrong with your slide. You hear that when it's coming in or out. It's just the slide mechanism keeping itself from coming out too far or in too far. Shut off our interior lights. 
exit the unit. Now for these style of steps, you want to make sure your exterior door is all the way open. Otherwise, this will catch on it. Bring your steps up. Turn this handle to lock that in there. Lock and deadbolt your exterior door. All right, so we're leaving the campsite now. I would go and unhook your water. Unhook your cable. Come to your low point drain. Open up both of those. Come to your hot water heater. Pull up on this pressure release valve. That's gonna go ahead and drain all your hot water out of there. Once that's done draining, remember to snap that close or your door won't open or won't close. Then remove your drain. Remember, hot water, be careful. Also remember to close this. You'd be surprised how many people do forget to close your hot water heater. And hook up your hitch work and head on up to the dump station. At the dump station. Hook up your sewage hose here. 10 foot long. Put the other end in the dump. And pull our black tank. That's going to be your sewage. Once it sounds like that's no longer draining, come over here to your black tank flush. Leave your black handle open. Again with your water pressure regulator. Hook up the hose at the dump station. Turn that on and let it run for a good five minutes. That's going to wash out your black tank. Get all that nastiness out of there. Close that off. Unhook your hose. Come down here and close your black handle. Pull your gray handle. When that sounds like it's no longer empty, we're going to come all the way up front and pull this gray water holding tank. Now remember, that's going to be clean the water. It's your sinks and your showers. That's going to clean your sewage hose, sewage hose out for you. And you can conveniently come right to your bumper, open that up, and store your sewage hose inside. Nice sanitary place for it. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. We hope you enjoy this Mesa Ridge for many years to come. Happy camping.